Okay, so we are talking about quality online course design today, and we are specifically talking about how to get students started. Uh, and this is going to align with the quality matters standard number one. And like I said earlier, we are going to try our best to model best practices today. And so because we are just getting started with this session, um, it's, it, the, the adventure is already starting. Um, we're going to be sharing some tips and some best practices with you. And you know, so we did start off by giving out some simple instructions and making sure our technology um, was working properly. Um, so it looks like things are going well. We've actually been using a new version of Blackboard Collaborate um, for about six months now, and um, we've had some very good luck with it. So um, we're hoping, we're crossing our fingers today um, for continued success um, with using this tool, but it's really much easier to um, get on, that's for sure. Um, so just a couple um, ways we're going to interact today. At the bottom of the screen, you will see a uh, kind of a speech bubble. And that is something you can click on if you want to uh, enter the text chat area. We find that usually in these um, sessions, these online sessions, that that's the way most of the participants communicate. Um, and then you, you can just type in your message and press enter at the bottom of the screen. Uh, in order to kind of interact with us. Um, if you would like, um, you can set up your camera and your microphone and add a photo of yourself. And you can do that by going to the bottom of the screen here where I have the arrow pointing. Um, and that's just sort of um, for fun. It's, it's nothing that you really need to do. Um, as long as you can hear me, I think it's gonna, we're off to a great start. Um, so what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to get to know each other a little bit more. Um, so to get that started, I'm going to introduce you to me. And um, so my name is Tracy Miller, and I'm the online teaching coordinator with the Faculty Development Instructional Design Center here at Northern Illinois University. And I've added just um, some information about my interests and my experience uh, in this field. And so if there's anything that you would just were always dying to know about me, I've added a couple things to this first screen so you get to know me a little bit better. Um, but I want to hear about you. So if you could introduce yourself, again, we'll use the text chat area. Um, just share a little bit about your name, your department that you're with, um, maybe either we've, we've out, um, invited the public this time. So if you're with a different university, uh, let us know where you're from, and then any experience you have with online teaching. So just kind of type away as, as I'm introducing some of the other um, things that we're going to be uh, working our way through this afternoon. Again, you can see the text chat area by clicking on that speech bubble. I can see Jan's added some information. Um, she's in the sociology department, and she's preparing an online course to be taught for the first time in summer 16. Um, Jan, I am so happy that you're starting it now. Um, and definitely, you know how to uh, get in touch with me if you need any help with that. Um, sounds like a, a great opportunity for you. Um, Todd is an educational researcher, department chair, um, incentivizing moving, oh, this the text chat is moving up on me now. Um, to move to online teaching, want to do the best job possible. That's awesome. Um, Bill is in music. He's using Blackboard as part of his teaching. Yes, these are things that you can definitely um, use in your blended or face-to-face -face courses also. She is um, from the School of Nursing and Health Sciences. Um, zero experience with online teaching. Well, now you'll have um, some best practices to kind of start things off. Um, Autumn is with the Department of Geography and hoping to teach an online course in the near future. Great jumping ahead on this. Um, Ursula, Department of Marketing, um, taught online for around 12 years to graduate students, prepping a new online course for next semester. Um, thank you for continuing to be a lifelong learner, Ursula, and um, fine-tuning your craft. I know you have lots of experience with it. 
Um, Stephen is a graduate student in the Department of Geography and teaches meteorology labs. Wow, and I know that you're not teaching online yet, but I think you will find some of these uh, practices valuable. Um, and I'm going to butcher this name. Quilly is um, an instructional designer and facil facilitates online training courses and supports faculty development. So you're from a different university, but you have a similar role to us. Um, so I'm excited to ha um, be able to share some of this with you and, and hope we can keep developing the relationship. Um, Preska is um, assistant professor in physical therapy in the School of Allied and Commutative Disorders. Um, has taught online um, during the summer and will enhance them by incorporating more interactive components. Well, let's just say we are um, we bring a lot to the table this afternoon. So I'm definitely hoping um, from for some feedback and some input from you because I think we can all learn from each other this afternoon. Okay, and I think we've all figured out how to use the text chat. Um, and I see Kathy has just joined us. Kathy, we've introduced ourselves in the text chat area. You can find that by the speech bubble at the bottom. Um, so feel free to introduce yourself, uh, the department you're with, and any experience you have with online teaching. Um, if anyone does want to use the talk button, um, then that will actually um, be accessed by clicking on the microphone kind of looking icon that's down at the bottom that I've pointed to. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we're going to um, kind of work through that. So I'm going to talk about some of my expectations and the um, etiquette that I'm thinking about for this workshop um, so everyone can meet my expectations. And first of all, if you do have a question and you'd like to use the microphone, I'd ask if you could please raise your hand first. And there's a kind of a hand icon in there along the bottom. And that will let us know, me know, that you have a question to ask. And then I can kind of concede the microphone over to you. Um, and that way, we're not um, talking over each other or um, causing some kind of echo. Um, so we'll, we'll try to use that method if someone does want to use their microphone. Um, and then please only talk when you are asked to volunteer, again, just so we don't um, kind of talk over each other. You can converse on the text chat area at any time. And I will try to do my best um, to keep up with the text chat. And of course, I might wait a few minutes for sort of a natural pause and then check back on um, what's happening in the text chat area. I'm also going to try to sort of repeat. And the reason that I'm repeating what's in the text chat area is so that when you're reviewing an archive later on, um, you, you don't see that text chat area. And so that will um, hopefully bring up the, the memory of what we were um, discussing in the text chat area. Um, so a couple things we could try out. Uh, you can use the at sign to indicate a reply to a particular person. So uh, let's say you agree with someone. Um, you can actually use the next thing, which is a plus one. Or if you just want to say, um, I do that too in my class, you can use the at sign in order to kind of address a particular person. And depending on how um, interactive we are in this session, some of these um, can really help the uh, text chat go a little bit more smoothly. Um, but we have a small group um, this afternoon, so I don't think we'll, we'll be too out of control. And then I'm going to give you some tips for success in the workshop this afternoon. One of the things you might want to do is minimize the distractions around you. So if you are in an office and you can shut a door, or if you want to turn your ringer off on the phone, um, whatever you can do that's going to minimize the distractions, I think, will help the workshop be more valuable to you. And it will also allow you to focus on the presentation. Um, and you can also really focus on the presentation because that archive will be available later. And that way, you don't have to take a lot of notes. You can go back and review it at a later time um, and, and kind of bring up those things that you might have taken notes on. Um, ask questions. 
Um, like I said, feel free to ask questions in the text chat area at any time. And then definitely answer others. So sometimes the, the text chat area can take on a life of its own because um, the participants start um, sharing stories and interacting with each other. And I, that would be a really great experience. Um, so continue to share your thoughts and ideas. Um, I am just one voice in this experience this afternoon. Um, we do have a wide range of experience here. And again, I think we're going to really learn from each other. So my objectives for the workshop is that you will, after this workshop, you will be able to explain the importance of introducing a course to your students. Um, and you'll gain some ways to help your students feel connected to the course and to you and to each other. Um, also, some tips on how to help students understand the purpose and the structure of an online course. And finally, to provide students with um, essential information to be successful in the online course. And I hope you've seen some of these um, attributes come out in the way that I actually introduced um, this beginning of this session. And again, I'm trying to model that practice. Um, and you can definitely use, use some of these tips if you were hosting an online um, synchronous session or a webinar is another name for it, um, like we've been doing today. So maybe that's just a component to your course. Um, but I'm going to throw things out to you again because I want to hear what you typically do on your first day of a face-to-face -face course. And you can post your suggestions in the text chat area. Or again, you could raise your hands if you'd like to use the microphone. So um, start adding ideas. What do you do on the first day, of course? Or even as a um, student, perhaps, what do you um, typically expect your faculty member to do on the first day, of course? Intros, cover sections of the syllabus. Um, then get into the content, right? The content doesn't necessarily come on the first day. Um, Bill says, have everyone introduce themselves. Jan, expectations and an outline. Um, gee, half of, the, half of the introduction of the class, half for lecture. lecture. So sure, yeah, give them um, the basics and then um, give them that um, beginning lecture to get the content moving. Um, ask to Ask the students to say what they expect from the course. That's a great way to get things started and um, give them a voice on, on what they're looking for. Um, introduction, syllabus, no game, no name games. OK, we're not having a, um, a baby shower, right? <laughs> um, Ursula is asking me. Um, I do cover content on the first day. OK, excellent. Yes, and, and sometimes it. Um, Depends on the content, and it depends on the, the time you have. Um, a pre-course test, yes, maybe gaining some um, pre-knowledge and, and figuring out where the students are at. Um, Todd, you introduce big ideas that will um, come back over and over again, right? So you're, you're reinforcing some of those really important concepts. Um, Christine does a lot of group activities during the semester. So the first day, I put them into groups and do a team building activity. Yeah, so you're setting them up for success in some of the things that they'll be doing uh, later on. These are all great things to do. Um, those first, that first course, first couple of um, days in the course. Uh, and so those are some of the things, the exact same things that you're going to do in an online course. You just may do them a little bit differently. Um, so some of the ones that I think we did talk about, introducing yourself, um, giving your students an overview of the, the course. Um, and that can be in a variety of ways. Um, maybe you're um, going through a schedule. Um, it, it certainly could be the review of the syllabus and your your policies. Um, and then, um, OK, no name games, right? But you could break them into groups and do um, some sort of team building activity like Christine talked about. Um, uh, reviewing prerequisite knowledge. We talked about that with doing some kind of pre-course quiz. And lecture. 
um, introducing some content. So um, those are all things that you've already identified, and those are things that you can definitely um, do in an online course to get the students started in the right direction. Um, so we're going to break those down a little bit more. And um, my big my big epiphany, right? Online courses are no different. So it's just, ooh, how do we go about doing those things um, in this kind of different environment? Uh, and so what we want to do when we think about an online course is we want to put ourselves into the student's um, shoes and think about things from their perspective. Um, and so some of the ways we can do that is to think about one. So one is organizing, navigating, and establishing. So the organizing piece. Um, right from the get-go, we want to make sure the students understand all the what's, when's, why's, and how's, um, how things are going to unfold in this course. And this can be especially important in um, an online course um, because you almost want to anticipate their questions a little bit more because um, they're they're going to be anxious about being in this environment anyways. And to, so, to help them answer those questions um, early is, is a good idea. Um, definitely navigating um, where they can find things um, early in the course and consistently in the course. And uh, we'll definitely be talking about all of these things in more detail. But sometimes we, um, we organize and we na navigate, and things make a lot of sense to us in our heads. And then um, when, um, when you look at it from that student perspective, um, you suddenly realize that maybe things aren't as organized as, as you had hoped. And then finally, establishing. So establishing relationships and con connections and how things fit together. Just being really obvious um, to everyone how that all comes together um, so they can concentrate on the content that you're delivering them and their success. And they're not getting all bogged down with um, you know, just kind of making their way through the, the course. OK, so we're going to talk about some principles for introducing a course to students. And what we've defined these as is goals. And so here's some of the goals of having a course introduction. Um, one of it is to get the students to connect with each other and to let them know you care. So um, you know, online learning can feel very isolating, and it almost feels like you know there's this disconnection. And you know, is there really um, you know an instructor or a teacher behind the wall there? Um, and to let them know right from the beginning um, that you care about them um, can really set them up for success. Um, also, another goal of a course introduction is to help students understand the purpose and the goals of the course. And in some ways, um, I, I know someone mentioned, um, ask the students what their goals are for, for the course. And that can really help them connect their own personal goals with maybe the goals that you have for the course, or that maybe even the program has for the course. Um, an introduction is really important for students to help them understand the flow and the structure of the course. Um, again, something that's going to be consistent, that they're going to you know, kind of make their way through um, week by week, um, and they're not going to get um, bogged down by um, kind of an inconsistent structure. Um, you're going to help them set expect you're going to let them know what your expectations are. Um, I gave you my expectations for um, the etiquette that we'll have in this workshop and um, and that's so um, you can you can meet my expectations and obviously we're a little bit more inf informal in this workshop. Um, but the idea again is to model that behavior. Um, the students will be more likely to meet your expectations if you let them know what they are. Um, Todd says, I like the idea of showing them the arc of the course. Oh, is, it sounds like arc stands for something. Yes, assessment process. 
keep going, Todd, if you have more of that. And then finally, um, to help the students be successful in the course, um, because that's, that's our number one goal. It's an assessment course, collect data, analyze, use. Yeah, so you're giving them um, that information that connects to um, an assessment course. We will go through the whole process. OK, so you're probably going to go through the um, whole process in a really generalized way and then let them understand um, that you know things are going to be broken down over the course of the semester. Exactly. Thank you, Todd. <laughs> OK, so what are we going to do to get the students to connect? Um, and, you know, this is really important in a couple different ways. And if you've been to any of our workshops before when we've talked about interaction in an online course, we always talk about interaction with uh, these three different components, um, faculty, students, and the content. That first um, getting started phase, um, that first week, we're really talking about interaction between the students and the faculty and the interaction with the students. And we're going to talk about some ways that you can do that. And I think you can guess um, on some of them. Um, another thing that I'd like to mention is there is this idea of you can do all of these things in week one. You can also um, do a, what's called a week zero, in which case um, you can open up your course uh, about a week early and allow the students to kind of do some of this navigation and maybe even some of these introductions before the um, semester even gets started. And that way, you can sort of jump into that content a little bit earlier. Um, but knowing that some of them may not um, go there until day one. So here are some things that will help the students connect. And that's to create a welcoming or an informative page for your course entry. So this is something that a lot of learning management systems have, but it's something that um, we definitely have here at NIU in Blackboard. And normally, what the course entry page is, is the module page that has um, a bunch of um, different information. Um, but you can actually make it more of this welcoming page so that literally when they click on the course for the first page, they're going to be welcomed and they're going to have a lot of information on how to get started. Um, so it's nothing that they sort of have to search for. And um, if anyone does not know how to do that, um, just let us know and we can um, help you out with that. Um, but it's actually under um, customizations in the teaching style area. Um, so just a couple things that are on this page. And there's a lot. Um, so depending on how, um, what kind of screen you're looking at, um, it could be um, legible or not. But um, just I'm going to kind of talk through it a little bit. Um, it, this is, it starts with a course description. The course description, you, it might be something that comes out of the course catalog. Um, and over on the other side, I've added um, kind of along the right-hand side, I've added some meeting dates and um, some instructor information, anything that's kind of just really short and sweet but will give them a lot of information. What I mean by meeting dates is if there's any dates in which you expect some live um, participation. So either it's a live synchronous but online session, um, similar to what we're doing here. Um, or maybe um, it's more of a blended class and you do actually have some face-to-face -face sessions scheduled um, to let the students know up front so that they can kind of mark those off in their calendar and make sure that they don't um, double book themselves. The next piece is the um, getting started. And I'm kind of moving down the left-hand side there. So that's, what do you do after you read this page? And so in this case, it's saying, view the information posted in the course content. Um, and so there should be a um, kind of a connecting area that does say course content, so they know exactly where to go. It doesn't have to say course content. It can say you know anything that 
um, make sense to you and where you'd like to direct them to next. Um, you may suggest that they download that course syllabus. Um, and next, review units and assignment information. And finally, um, materials, uh, how they can find different materials um, for their first few assignments um, so that, again, they know how this process is going to unfold. Um, I always like to put the course learning objectives in there. Um, if you are able to do your own course learning of objectives, um, you know, you, you probably have this in your um, syllabus already, but again, this kind of just puts it really front and center. Um, and then if it's something that maybe your department has mandated, um, you know, again, it might be in your syllabus, um, put it here so that, um, you know, th they're going to see it maybe on a regular basis. Um, we all have our thoughts on how, how much the students look through the syllabus. Um, and so the, I think in some ways, the, the more places we can put this important information, the better. Um, at the bottom, I've added an ADA statement. And that is um, something that's required at NIU uh, that we add to all of our syllabus. And so I think it's important, again, to kind of put it here front and center. Um, but I think the important part of the, the tip of this slide is actually um, to have that welcoming page and to give them a lot of um, information up front, but in a really simple format. So it's, it's not something, a, a lot of text that they're going to have to kind of drag through. Um, another way you can kind of welcome your students is to create a video of yourself. And um, you, you'd be surprised at how easy that actually could be. Um, so sort of as my sample here, um, I've used the welcome page that our director, Jason Rohde, uses in introducing his online students. And he, um, he's added it to his instructor page. And so there's a little bit about him and his professional background. And then there's a video that you can click on. Um, and uh, we found that you can actually use your cell phone and uh, just do a really informal uh, video of yourself. And it, again, it kind of put, puts a face to um, the person that's leading this course. And it helps your students, you know, again, feel like there's a, there's a real person there that, um, that cares about their learning. And um, it doesn't have to be perfect. That just means that you're human. Um, another way to introduce yourself would be in the instructor area. Um, it could say a variety of things. You can choose what you call it. It can say uh, faculty introduction, um, getting to know your instructor, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, but some of the things that we recommend that you add to this introduction is definitely contact information. Um, you may even talk about um, your preferred way of being contacted, so your students can, again, sort of meet your expectations for that. Um, a little bit of professional background or maybe um, other courses that you also teach, uh, maybe a professional organization that you're a member of, um, you know, give that information to your students so that um, they can understand a little bit more about you. Um, I like to add this instructor role, and uh, that is sort of your own um, feeling on what your role is in this course. And that um, also helps the students understand maybe how you're going to respond to them and um, how you are going to participate in the course. So again, it's not so much um, how you do it as much as um, you know, take some time to introduce yourself um, to your students. Um, and I might jump ahead a little bit, uh, um, I, but I feel like I like to talk about this now. Um, I talked about professional background. Um, share with your students um, whatever you are comfortable with sharing with. Sometimes it's a good idea to um, be a little bit more um, personable, and so maybe you're going to share things. Like I shared in the, um, the first slide about myself, about some of my hobbies or 
um, some of my other interests. And again, it just gives you that kind of real person behind um, this online environment. And then, of course, next, you want the students to introduce themselves. Uh, we introduced ourselves using the text chat area. I think one of the com most common ways of students to introduce themselves in an online course is to use the discussion board. And so, um, sorry, it's a little bit like na a name game, um, but there's, there's a, a variety of ways that you can have students introduce themselves. It can be as simple as, um, you know, what's your name? What's your major? Um, what are your goals um, for the course? Um, or you can um, even have them, um, you know, post pictures, maybe post um, one of their favorite poems just because you kind of get to know them, um, if you can kind of see what their interests are. Um, I had somebody recently tell me that they had their students introduce themselves um, as if they were a, the voice of their pet or something like that. So um, I suppose depending on the discipline, um, you can keep it as um, narrow as you want or, or as creative as you want. Um, this particular example um, we use sometimes in our um, online experiences, but we're just asking um, for three symbols of yourself as the online icebreaker. So um, in this case, if you're a mother of two children, you can have a picture of a wallet. I'm assuming that means you're spending a lot of money because you have two children. As a mother of um, two college students, I can attest to that. Um, you know, and you can continue reading it again, just maybe kind of an icebreaker activity. Uh, also teaches them how to use the discussion board if you're going to be using that, that a lot. So it's got kind of a two um, prong objective for using a discussion board. And if anyone has any other clever introduction ideas or prompts, um, feel free to share it. Um, but I'm going to move on. Um, to talk a little bit about how you could share um, your purpose and goals for the course. And that can definitely be in the information page. Uh, when we talked about the welcome page earlier, um, it suggested going to the information page. So uh, what's a little different about just putting in the course description um, versus putting in the purpose or your goal for the course. And that's giving them maybe a little bit more context about um, how this course will help them either in their program or maybe um, in their future, or maybe how it even connects um, a sequence of courses in the program sequence. So just giving them a little bit more detail on how you see the purpose of this course um, and how important it's going to be to them. Um, and you can just add that and be very you know, direct. Here's the purpose. And you know, here's some description. Um, another way, bring in the videos. Um, give, again, gives you a, vo a voice and a, and a face. Um, in this case, uh, the, uh, Jason is doing his introduction. I left the closed captioning on so that you could see that he's literally, what he's literally saying in this case, since we're not watching his video. Um, he said, now this course builds directly upon those processes and we're going to really focus on, you know, so add your own um, objective in there. You know, this could be something that um, can fit into a variety of different kind of courses. Um, but it's, it's something you probably would do face-to-face -face, um, with your students on that first day of class. So this is just a way you can do it online. Um, it, we talked about um, asking the students what their goals were for the course. And so in this case, that could be um, one of those um, purpose or goal activities. So this is just another idea of, you know, you can have your icebreaker discussion or you can use a discussion to have the students reflect on how um, the course relates to them. And so you're giving them, um, you know, that opportunity to reflect. 
In this case, this is actually from an evaluation course. And so um, it's a course that Stephanie Richter does uh, here in faculty development. And she's added three different choices, three different questions in order for the students to respond to. So you know, it's kind of early when we're talking about getting started. Uh, and But this will give them some choices to um, kind of go with the one that sort of fits them the best. And again, another opportunity if you plan on using a lot of discussion boards to learn how to use the tool uh, maybe a little bit earlier before um, the grading is going to be really important. OK, so that was a little bit about um, why it is important to really let your students know about the purpose of this course and some goals you have for them and some um, goals that they may establish for themselves um, in order to help them meet those goals. Um, next, we're going to talk about the structure and flow of the course. And so we're going to talk about how you, again, could get your students started in being successful in working and navigating around the structure and flow of the course. Uh, so here's one way, and that's to provide them with a really comprehensive schedule. And um, sometimes we put that in our syllabus. I, I see syllabuses you know, on a regular basis here. And um, th this kind of table format, I just find works really well. And it helps them know um, exactly how things are going to unfold. Some of our um, schedules are based off of um, the, the class times, so the dates and the times. It's a little bit different. Times handled a little bit different in an online environment. And so you, you often look at things. In this case, um, the dates are set up as units. Um, you can call them weeks. You can call them modules. Um, but we're defining the, the date range. Um, we're also, again, adding in those meeting times. So that if there is a week where um, they are going to be meeting with you face to face or online, but live, um, letting them know really how this whole um, semester is going to unfold. Um, this, this actually helps when you're doing um, your overall design of the course. If you've done um, a lot of the structure in the design um, ahead of time, this schedule is going to just um, practically write itself um, as you kind of go um, through these activities. And then any assignments or reading and due dates all in one place. And so they, again, can kind of plan out how the semester is going to be structured. That might help them if they know they're going to have a really busy week. Um, maybe they're kind of comparing it to other courses. Um, and you know they're going to want to prepare themselves um, to, to be the most successful uh, for those really um, crunch weeks. And then, of course, if there's a week that, um, you know, oftentimes online courses uh, have people that, you know, are looking for a really flexible sk schedule. And sometimes that's because, you know, they have of other obligations. Say they're going to be um, out of town for a week. This allows them to really prepare um, well in advance for the way the semester is going to unfold. Here's just another example of how you can provide them with a comprehensive schedule. Uh, it definitely could be a PDF document that you attach somewhere, or it could be a table um, that you add uh, you know, on its own, maybe in the course information page. Um, we often suggest that the course information page is a really good place to put that um, static, consistent information um, that they can always go back and sort of look for. And so, you know, they're, if they're looking at this the first week and, you know, they're marking things off in their calendar and they're making plans, that's great. Um, but even mid-semester, they can go back and kind of recheck and recalibrate and um, look at that schedule again. Um, one caution with schedules like this, um, give yourself a little leeway, um, especially if you're doing um, the course for the first time 
we were doing the course online for the first time because we all know we can um, fluctuate a little bit. You may even want to say that, you know, subject to um, some change, you know, um, you will be notified if there's any um, changes to the schedule, um, just to give yourself a little bit of um, flexibility there. The next thing that I would suggest in helping the students understand the structure of the flow of an online course is to actually create a course tour. And you can do that by doing a screencast. And so, you know, if anyone is interested in doing that, uh, we have screencasts workshops here. Um, we've all, we also have some resources or certainly uh, contact us on how to do that. There's different um, screencast tours that you can do. But I want to talk more about, OK, what is that? And so in this case, this screenshot is from a course tour that I did for um, a MOOC that we designed with Dr. Greg Long um, here at NIU. He actually um, did a, a lot of the, the lectures and taught the course. Um, but as part of my role, I created a course tour so that our participants understood that structure and flow of the course. And so basically, I just kind of walked them through um, the navigation of where they could find things and how each week would unfold in a, you know, in a predictable manner. Again, I left the um, closed captioning on so you could see what I was saying. And I literally say, we're going to take a little tour of this course so you'll have a sense about how things are set up. And um, you know that could be a course tour. Um, it could be um, just uh, some more instructions. Maybe it's sort of a diagram of how um, the course is. I've also seen um, scavenger hunts, another idea that um, we've heard about. We are, um, you'll create sort of a scavenger hunt um, and um, guide the students through it that way in kind of an engaging manner um, that hopefully gets them um, interested in kind of exploring through some of the content. Um, and then they won't be so lost um, further on. So the next thing I want to talk about, so we just kind of concluded um, some tips on how to get students started in how the course is structured and how the flow of the course is going to unravel. Um, next, I want to talk about setting expectations with your students and how you can go about doing that in an online course. Um, and again, I don't think there's any reason you can't use some of these tips for your face-to-face uh, -face or your blended course. And so uh, something like setting up your expectations or explaining your policies to your students, um, putting it in Blackboard where they can find it, um, even when they can't get a hold of you, um, it, it's just a great way to kind of um, store those policies and um, allow them to um, be able to tap into those uh, at any time. Um, so a couple that we recommend is that you share your late work policy. Um, and th that can be very important in an online environment um, because, you know, it, in some ways it's, it's even easier because you can tell exactly when they've handed things in and Blackboard keeps that for you. Um, but if you are sitting in a classroom and you're having students turn in work and you notice that, um, you know, just due to the size of the pile, um, there's going to be some late work coming in. It's important to set up your expectations again for what your policy is. Um, in this case, um, it just says we're going to mark down uh, first by 50%. Um, if it's a day late, and then, you know, and no points after that. Again, it's not as much about what this particular example says. Um, you can come up with your own late work policy. Maybe it's your department policy. Um, it's just a matter of um, making it available to your students. Um, an incomplete policy, you know, a lot of detail on what you consider incomplete um, and, you know, definitely the consequences for, again, both late work or incomplete work. 
Um, and then you can add any of the other policies um, that you have or um, your department has or even the university. So we've added um, NIU academic integr integrity policy here. And um, the reason I think we add this one as an example is um, I often get questions on, you know, how do you monitor student behavior um, either with academic dishonesty or how they conduct themselves um, in a, like a discussion board. And you know, if, if students are not conducting themselves in inheritance with um, some of the university policies, uh, you know, there are policies there for a reason and there are consequences. And so again, just sort of reminding them about those policies um, will hopefully keep them well behaved. Um, and I want to take a break for just a minute to talk, to be able to um, collect some questions. I've put a lot of information out there, and um, we're actually getting down to our, our last um, 13 minutes or so. So um, definitely, if you have any questions or you'd like some more detail on, on anything, please um, put it in the text chat area. Um, is here's some ideas on how you can set expectations um, for how your students are going to participate um, and letting them know um, early in, in that regard. Um, and this is actually, uh, again, sort of a cut and paste from the syllabus. Um, but it's a little different because um, we more often grade participation um, in an online um, environment. Um, because we want to make sure they're engaged, right? We're nervous that they're um, kind of passively uh, just reading articles and um, in watching lectures. And so uh, in order to engage them more, we're putting some point values uh, behind participation. Um, so here's just some recommendations about exactly what that means to you. And so, um, you know, you can you can read them. I'm not going to read them for you, but you know, just letting them know um, how you will be grading basically their participation in the class. And then on the bottom is just sort of another recommendation for the online synchronous sessions. Um, it, sometimes online synchronous sessions are like office hours or um, even like a study hour, catch up, and they could be more optional. Um, so let students know what your expectations are. If it's something where you're delivering important content or even doing an assessment like a, a presentation, um, let them know what your participation expectations are and, and how they can make them up. Um, we talked about the consequences they may have um, based off of the university policies. Let them know what your expectations are um, for any of these communication tools that you may use. Um, and it may be even um, how you expect them to um, email you. But I think one of the most important ones uh, um, that we all sort of get a little nervous about is the discussion board. Um, again, the, whatever expectation rule policy you set up is your choice. Again, it's just sharing that with the students. Um, I kind of like this one, though. Um, so here's some guidelines for participating in the discussion board. Um, use some kind of descriptive um, subject line. That helps you um, manage them when you go to um, to grade them, especially. But it also helps if they all kind of look like um, week one discussion, you know, they can get really um, kind of disjointed. I see some questions coming in, so I'm just going to look over for a second. Is there any existing rubric out there for scoring student par participation in discussions that is sufficiently general for any online course um, and there is good reliability valid evidence? I find the idea of scoring discussions kind of tedious. The problem, Todd, is that there may be too many of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can definitely Google it. <laughs> um, and you're probably going to um, find you are going to mix and match some of them. 
um, based off of what makes sense to you. Um, I don't think there's any that's, that are considered valid at this point necessarily. Um, but I can, in my email, I can share some that we, we've kind of liked over the years. Um, happy, happy to share those. Um, Ursula said, do you suggest synchronous office hours? From your experience, and maybe others, are these well attended? Um, uh, you know what? Um, of course, they're more well attended if you make them um, a requirement. Um, one of the things I think it's it's nice maybe to do an office hour um, when perhaps right be before a midterm or sort of a major um, assessment so students can um, all hear from each other and clarify things like that. Um, if you're worried about oh, spending so much time getting everything set up and then nobody shows up, you know, make that one of your expectations. Um, I, you know, please let me know two days before if you're not going to attend and, and you know, you can just cancel if it, if it looks like you're going to have low attendance. So again, um, well attended, if they're, if they're nervous about an upcoming assessment is, is when they go to those optional office hours. Um, you know, any kind of going back to the discussion board etiquette, um, anything that you want, couple that jump out at me, um, let them know the sort of language you're looking for. So the fourth um, bullet down, um, they, they will give you the, the shortest amount possible um, unless you tell them that, you know, you have certain um, formal language, professional language expectations. Uh, that you don't want just kind of um, text speak or, or anything like that. And of course, that they're going to be respectful of other people's opinions. <coughs> I can tell them at the end of the hour because I'm losing my voice. OK. Um, another thing you want to do is to help the students to be successful. Um, so. You can do that by giving them um, any additional information um, that will help them to be successful. And um, sometimes that's um, more information, um, again, in several places, um, so that they can always refer back to it. Um, but it's also important just to kind of let them know um, when you're answering maybe those early discussion um, introductions, you know, talk about maybe a, a common interest you have or notice that, um, you know, that maybe they have a significant event that's coming up. Um, maybe they're graduating. This is their final semester. Anything that you can let them know that um, you care about their success. Um, be really specific about how to get started. Um, again, this is that landing page um, that they should see early on. Um, but then um, you could also point them out, welcome, start here. I mean, that just seems you know, really obvious on, on how to get things started um, and puts them you know, in, the, in the right direction early. Um, let them know if there's any technical requirements that they might have for the course. And these are sort of the minimal ones. Um, that they have access to Blackboard or learning management system, um, and kind of how you expect them to interact with their email. There may be other things. There may be um, lab software that you're going to use or presentation software. Um, anything that you're going to use in your course, let them know up front that this is something that they're going to need. Um, my example for this afternoon is actually um, in my um, workshop reminder in which I told you that you know you would need speakers or headphones um, and a microphone was optional uh, you need access to the internet you know just giving them some of those basic technical requirements um, also give them information on how to receive um, technical help so you know if they needed to go to the um, the help desk ITS for help um, or, uh, you know, uh, Blackboard help or something like that, 
that will help them um, go to that sort of technical help and hopefully will take that burden off of you. Um, and you don't necessarily have to learn every single technical aspect of um, you know, maybe different software that you're using. So uh, we're getting down to the last few minutes here. Um, so I want to connect this all back to how this fits in with Quality Matters. So over a year ago now, NIU adopted Quality Matters as their online course design standards. What we've been talking about today is Quality Matters standard number one. And it's all about getting students started. And so we've kind of wrapped up all of their substandards into one big um, sentence. And I don't re normally read off the slides, but I think it just wraps things up so nicely I'm going to. Quality online courses help students understand the course, including the purpose, structure, policies, etiquette, and how to get started. They help students feel connected to their instructor and classmates and inform students of prerequisite knowledge, technical skills, and technological tools required to be successful. So if you are working on creating a quality online course, and sometimes that's something you do as a review to a course that you've already conducted, and sometimes it's great to know these things as you design a class, think about these things we've talked about this afternoon, um, because they're going to um, really help to have a quality online course. Um, definitely, if you have any concluding questions, have them come in. But I'm going to share some of the favorite practices we have here in faculty development. Um, one, we talked about at the very beginning, to changing that course entry point to um, a welcoming and informative page instead of the module page. Um, don't forget to introduce the course purpose and structure especially as it relates to your voice. This is your chance to give your students some context about why this is important. Create a course tour. Uh, use the suggestions we have or you know, come up with something on your own and then share it with us so we can share it with others. Um, introduce yourself professionally um, and also maybe a, a little bit um, on the personal side to put that real person behind there. Um, provide them with specific steps on how to get started. And then provide students ways to interact with each other early and give them those etiquette expectations um, and for that civil, civil course that you're looking for. Um, and, and I think we've covered everything that we set out to in our course objectives. And again, throw some questions in there um, if you think there's something that I missed. Um, I want to throw up this last slide, which is information on how to get a hold of me. Um, all my information is here. Also, ways to connect with um, the online program and development support department here. Um, you can reach out to any of us, and we'd be happy to help you. A um, couple days, you'll be getting a survey. Please give us feedback through the survey, too. We, um, we read the results of those, and we try to adapt um, you know, in order to, to meet your expectations for the workshops. We definitely try to do our best. Um, thank you, though, for joining me this afternoon. Um, if you're like a lot of us, we're um, getting grades in right about now and finishing the semester up and um, looking forward to a break. Uh, to kind of re-energize. Um, I hope to see more of you um, in our upcoming workshops. Thanks, Gian, Christine. Oh, good. <laughs>